Hi, Lokesh. Can you hear me? Sir Raj here, if you can say something to me. I mean. Yeah, um, Lokesh or uh, Raj Kumar. Okay. Yes, so you are uh, coordinating today's uh, session. Yes, sir. Me, Shatyan, and Lokesh. Are okay. Up there. So I have one thing. Okay. So once uh, we will start the workshop, so we can take a break of like uh, 10 15 minutes in an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. And I just want to talk about the Arma chapter. Okay. Okay. A brief, um, like five minutes uh, presentation or something, I will say. Okay. Okay, sir. Does, and I discussed already these things with uh, Anurag. Okay. Yes, sir. So, um, so that is the plan. Okay. Right, sir. And I will be here. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. You have my number, right? Yeah, right, sir. I have. Okay. And there is no echo from my side, right? Nothing, sir. Everything fine. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Raj. Yes, sir. We share our first name, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Shivkumar sir, good morning. Good morning, good morning. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm also fine, doing well. Yeah. <laughs> good good. I heard that Ajay is not well. Huh? Yeah, he told us the same. Yeah, he sent me a message that uh, he is not well and uh, unable to join today's meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he is not well for uh, like maybe three, four days or something like that. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You're live streaming it, right? So probably he can see and he told that you are going to record it for him. Yeah. Sorry. That would be good, yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to tell that I'm going to like uh, give a brief uh, introduction about ARMA student chapter we, which we established here. Okay. Uh, in between, like uh, after uh, maybe half an hour or uh, half an hour or uh, maybe an hour. Okay, so what we can do is uh, in between the first portion, the first portion is going to be introductory. Uh -huh. And uh, we are going to uh, basic rock mechanics and what sand control is all about is what we are going to talk in the first half an hour, 45 minutes maximum. Okay. After that, we will go into uh, surface sand management. So in between these two, probably you can uh, do your presentation. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Abhishek, you got it? Uh, yes, sir. No problem. Yeah, uh, actually, we need to tell uh, our Nitish also. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we have one Nitish in our side also. <laughs> yes, so I, I, underst seen so I understood, sir. You were, uh, you were talking to him, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's why I told our Nitish. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, well, welcome, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> So if someone wants to take a break for five or uh, four or five minutes, they can take it. We will start at 11. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lokesh. Lokesh. 
Asal Lokesh will be joining here. Yeah. He is in the waiting room. You have uh, enabled the waiting mode. You can, uh, you know, you can remove it. So let's uh, let anyone join. You don't need to admit. Okay. Sure, sir. Um, not sure. Uh, hello, Sir Kumar, sir.
Good morning, uh, respected professors, guests, and all my dear friends. Um, I see most of us are here, uh, but we will uh, wait for next five minutes. Any of uh, your friends who have not joined yet, let them know. We will be starting at chart 11.5. So I feel uh, most of us are here. Uh, I think I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I, as Harshida, heartily welcoming everyone present here this morning. Before starting the session, it's a humble request to all the attendees to mute themselves and unmute only when our guest asks to 
or for raising doubts at the end of the session. Till then, you can type your queries in the chat box, which will be taking up, taken up as the session ends. To make this session more exciting and interactive, we will have some quizzes in between and even at the end of the session. So make sure you attend the event with all your heeds and interest and learn something new. To coordinate this insightful workshop today, we have Professor Nitish Kumar Maurya. He is an assistant professor at the Department of Petroleum Engineering and a faculty advisor of SPE IIT ISM Dhanbad student chapter. We welcome you, sir. And also we have Pro Professor Raj Kiran, he is also an assistant professor at the Department of Petroleum Engineering and faculty advisor of ARMA IIT ISM Dhanbad student chapter. We welcome you, sir. And I also see there are a lot, a lot of our beloved professors here present in this meet. We welcome you, sir. And you, all the participants here, are heartily welcome to this virtual workshop on Sandmaster software and surface sand management organized jointly by SPE IIT ISM Dhanbad student chapter and ARMA IIT ISM Dhanbad student chapter in collaboration with Greenfield Oil and Trading Services. So putting up this today's session, we have few guests from Greenfield Oil and Trading Services talking about our first guest. He's currently associated with Greenfield Oil and Trading Service Company as a principal technical consultant. He is a dynamic oil and gas industry professional with enriched expertise and experience of more than four decades in the areas in the areas of project management, well completions, sand control, and artificial lift too. Proud to deliver you that, uh, sir is one of the eminent alumni who did post-graduation in petroleum engineering from the IIT ISM Dhanbad itself. So ladies and gentlemen, he is none other than Mr. C. Babu Shiv Kumar. We welcome you, sir. And with him, our next guest, we have Mr. Abhishek Gupta. He is currently working as a senior petroleum engineer as a in the green field and trading services with being an expert in execution in completion and rigless operations for turnkey projects. He's working as a petroleum engineer and has eight years of experience in the oil and gas industry. We welcome you, sir. And lastly, we have Mr. Nitish Chaudhary as our quiz coordinator. He will coordinate us during the quizzes and he's a well engineer and also the business development manager at the Greenfield and Trading Services. We welcome you, sir. So without any further delay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the eminent personalities of Greenfield Oil and Trading Services to brief us on Sandmaster software and surface sand management. Sir, this virtual podium is all yours. Thank you, ISM team. Hi, good, good morning, everyone. Hi, Nitish. Uh, this is Nitish Chaudhary from Greenfield Oil and Trading Services. I'm working as a business development manager, and I'd like to thank the entire ISM team to give us an opportunity to present a workshop on surface sand management. Let me share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, yes, sir, it is. Yes, it is. Before we start, let's have a quick GOTA safety moment. As we all aware of pandemic COVID-19, more than 45 lakhs people have died due to this pandemic and now. Let's see how it is transmitted. It is transmitted from person to person via respiratory droplets. It is spread from contact with infected surface or objects. How it is prevented? Avoid close contact. Cover your mouth while coughing and sneezing. Practice good hygiene. Maintain social distancing. 
how to take action inform your supervisor at work if you feel unwell isolate yourself and contact nearest health center as soon as possible now moving moving to about the slide greenfield oil and trading services was established in 2014 as an oil and gas consultancy firm main purpose was to provide oil and gas consultancies to operators in india and subcontract srp esp designing and tender processing to various contractors in 2017 we have added software development team to provide customized software as per client requirements and from 2019 we are expanding on a global level our main vision is to provide oil and gas consultancy along with customized oil and gas software we provide oil and gas consultancy in the field of well completion and artificial lift petroleum economics completion design liner hangers hydraulic fracturing and our main area sand management our technology comprises of customized application and software for oil and gas database management and database warehousing eliminating spreadsheet with standard software applications workflows from sub surface until drilling completions process etc so what you will learn from this workshop we will going to cover all the basics of rock mechanics and sand sand production mechanism we will also cover the surface sand management part you will describe what are the parameters are to be evaluated for effective sand management including risk tools equipment requirement for efficient sand management sand control what is holistic sand management study how data sands can be utilized in various aspects of sand production issues and we will have a short quiz on surface sand management as well on multi multimeter so you just have to type www.mentimeter.com on your screen and enter the code that we will going to provide you and now i like to hand over to mr shiv kumar babu he is currently working as principal consultant at gots uh one thing uh, nitesh uh, and the entire team you can also log into mentimeter via your uh, smartphones as well not uh, i mean it's not only from your laptop it's also from your mobile phones as well okay let me now take over i'll share my screen uh babu sir can we have a small demo of quiz session uh, you want to do that yeah you can do that and then we can start with my part yes. yeah this is how you go about in the mentimeter this will explain how the quiz is going to be conducted so guys uh, you have to type www.menti.com and use this code 23410286 just type this www. www.menti.com and use this code 23410286 we will have three basic questions that gives you the idea like how we will conduct the quizzes this is just an introduction so all of you guys can uh, log in and let's go through this three questions
just you have to type www.menti.com and use this course 2341-0286. We're looking for people with excellent knowledge. I think most of you have got the hang of it. Can we go to the next question? Yes. Oh, good. There are still people logging in here. Maybe you can wait some more. Next question, your favorite topic in sand management. Rock mechanics, sand control, surface sand management. So Babushta, you have a lot of uh, work to do to uh, increase that number three <laughs> to more maybe after this session. <laughs> yeah, today is basically surface sand management. Uh, so we need to create an interest in surface sand management. Yeah. <laughs> it's a task. It's a task for us to now increase the the takers for surface sand management, yeah. Last okay. question, have you worked on any project related to sand management? Yes, yeah, no. Most of the people are not aware of sand management. Good, 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 good. Thank you guys. Uh, this is just a demo of quiz session. We will, uh, we will update you soon with, uh, like we will have a quiz on surface sand management. So we will update you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you guys. Okay, now let me share my screen and uh, okay. yeah, the host needs to enable me to share my screen. I'm uh, Raj Kumar, Kumar uh, my wife's. <laughs> wait, wait, Satyam will do it. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, you can see my screen? Yes, yes, it's visible. Now let me start. So this slide was uh, introduced by Nitish. Uh, meanwhile, let me start by thanking Harshada for the wonderful introduction. Good morning, uh, dear Professor Rajkiran, Professor Nitish Maurya, other professors and students of my very own alma mater. It feels so very good to be amongst you to share a little bit of my experiences with sand management. After a stint of almost 41 years with national oil companies in India, Middle East and Malaysia, I am now a petroleum engineering consultant with Greenfield Oil and Trading Services. 
today's introduction uh, today's uh, discussion will uh, involve an introduction into uh, rock mechanics uh, sand control and then we will focus on surface sand management and uh, give a demonstration of our sandmaster software so we see that uh, in the initial quiz uh, very few of you are interested in surface sand management but at the end of uh, this lecture we hope that most of you are going to be uh, fans of uh, sand management surface sand management so how we are going to go about with this lecture is we start with an introduction then we look at uh, the surface uh, sand production uh, mechanisms sand production mechanisms both downhole and uh, into the surface then we look at the surface sand management uh, principles and finally we'll go into a demonstration of sandmaster and a few case studies on uh, what we have done with the sandmaster software I think most of you would have questions and you can post it in the you can post it in the chat box and uh, we'll take it up uh, as we go uh, uh, maybe i can stop in between and uh, look at questions or uh, at the end of the lecture i can uh, take questions any which way which you guys would want it, want to go about it so now uh, let me uh, tell you about the importance of sand management in oil field. You see, uh, almost 50 to 60 percent of the world's reservoirs are sandstone, that is clastics. Uh, so, uh, sandstone is formed, as you all know, by transportation of uh, sand particles, their consolidation and cementation. So, uh, if you look at it in a general point of view, deeper the reservoirs, they are more consolidated and shallower reservoirs are loosely uh, loosely packed so most of the sand production would come from shallower reservoirs and uh, in general if you see gas is always in a deeper zone and oil is always found in shallower zones so most of the sand production in the field in, in the field comes from shallower oil fields in india if you see most of the onshore fields assam uh, Gujarat and uh, even Rajasthan, they are all uh, sandstone reservoirs and every one of them has seen sand production. So uh, in effect, I would say that uh, of the 50% of the uh, oil and gas reservoirs in the world, uh, which are affected by sand, uh, of these 50% of total reservoirs, about 50% have sand production. So if you can uh, control the sand, we can both increase the production and also uh, get an additional production of about five to 10% of oil from all the reservoirs put together. So if you take a field of about 50,000 barrels, you can say that uh, the, the deferment due to sand, sand production is about, about five 5,000 barrels per day. So that will be, uh, that'll be the range of, uh, production deferment which you see because of the sand production. So now let's go and see what we uh, do. Most of, the most of the operators, they have their own philosophy of managing the sand. So typically it's a three-pronged approach. One is CDP based. CDP based is you control the sand at the reservoir by maintaining a drawdown which is below your critical drawdown pressure. So the objective is no sand should move from the reservoir into the well bore. So in doing this, what we are doing is we are restricting our drawdown to the critical drawdown pressure. Critical drawdown pressure is the pressure, is the drawdown pressure at which your sand will start disintegrating from the formation and moving into the well bore. So this is the first approach. So you're limiting your production. The second approach is sand control. Sand control is installation of a filtration mechanism. It can be a screen, it can be gravel pack, it can be a frac pack. So what uh, in this case, you are not limited by the CDP, but what happens is the moment you install any mechanical device uh, across the well bore, your 
increasing the skin and thereby reducing the productivity of the well. So the third philosophy is no sand control and produce to a limit which you can handle at the surface. So what you do is you devise your sur surface facilities in a way that you can manage the sand on surface. So you have desanders and you uh, also build your surface facility to withstand the erosion, uh, erosion and corrosion which may be caused by the production of sand. So you have uh, enhanced surface facility enhanced sand handling capability and you're allowing the well to produce to the best of its capacity. This way you're not limiting the reservoir, you're getting the maximum production. So overall, uh, you cannot uh, go with uh, most of the fields, they have all the three philosophies. So in the initial period of uh, the well production, you go with CDP because in the initial stage, you have sufficient drawdown available. As the reservoir pressure depletes, the drawdown pressure available keeps reducing. We will see this when we go to the critical drawdown pressure charts. Okay, so in the initial period, you go with uh, CDP based, then you can come up and do a retrofit sand control at a later stage when you see that you do not have enough critical drawdown pressure available for you to produce the well economically. Then. Finally, when you see that uh, you cannot manage uh, even with sand control to control the sand, then you manage it at surface. Many, many operators move from CDP based to directly managing sand at surface. And many operators start with, with a tight sand control in between. And at a later stage, they see the production is so low that you have to remove the sand control and recomplete the well and produce it with surface sand control. So this is a three-pronged approach and every field has its own philosophy. Every operator has their own philosophy. So after going through the basics of sand control, now we see the mechanism of sand production. As I told you, uh, sandstone reservoirs are formed by, by the deposition and consolidation of sand particles uh, over uh, over, uh, over millions of years. So the deeper the reservoir, the consolidation is better. And the shallower the reservoir is, the consolidation is very weak. So basically there are two steps for sand production. One is disintegration of the grains from the matrix. So the grains you see here is disintegrating from the matrix. It is moving into the perforations and transport of the matrix to the well bore from the reservoir. It comes to the well bore. Okay. And from the well bore, it has to be transported to the surface. So there are uh, there are three requirements here. One is disintegration, transportation from the reservoir to the well bore, and from the well bore to the surface. So what are the factors affecting sand production? So disintegration is caused because of the degree of cementation and consolidation being lesser than the forces which are acting on the rock and reduction of pore pressure. See, what is holding the, the, the particles together is the pore pressure along with the, with, the, with the principal stresses which are acting across the reservoir. The uh, principal stresses are three. You, will, uh, you would have heard of the, uh, the stresses in the maximum, uh, maximum horizontal stress, the minimum horizontal stress and the vertical stress. So these are the three principal stresses which act on any, any, any reservoir uh, in the field. Okay. So once you reduce the pore pressure, there is a disbalance. So, so the effective, uh, effective, uh, effective strength of the rock is reduced because you're uh, flowing, you're reducing the pressure. And because of that, the rock becomes weaker, its uh, strength becomes lower and disintegration takes place and increasing water produ uh, production. So when you see that the water is coming in, so you will have water and oil two phase flow within the reservoir. This changes the capillary pressures and the capillary pressures which are holding the particles in place becomes weaker and the sand gets disintegrated from the matrix. So increasing production rate, as you increase the drawdown, you will see that the forces acting on the particles are greater and greater. And because of this, 
the sand starts moving it. And as you increase drawdown, you have the same effect. So it just uh, it just keeps moving in, and particularly when you increase the drawdown and your reservoir pressure is dropping. So overall, the stresses on the rock becomes greater. And finally, the reservoir fluid viscosity. So because of the viscosity, the drag forces are very high on the sand particles. So with the drawdown, the drag forces, uh, the, the, the sand gets disintegrated from the matrix, comes into the well board. And if your velocities are high enough to overcome the, the transport velocity of the sand particles, it will come to the surface. That way you get the production of sand onto the surface. Now, how do we analyze this? So what is the basic technology? So what we need to do is to build a mechanical earth model. How do we build the mechanical earth model? So, uh, and what is uh, basically a mechanical earth model? So what we need to know is how strong is our reservoir rock? So this is uh, dependent on the stresses which are applied on the rock. That is the sigma h, sigma h capital, which is the maximum horizontal stress, sigma h small, which is the, the minimum horizontal stress. These are perpendicular to one another. And sigma v is the overburden pressure along with the uh, pore pressure. So this will, this and the depth of the formation and degree of consolidation is going to uh, influence how strong your reservoir rock is. Next, what we need to know is, if we try to break, what will happen? Is it elastic or is it plastic? To know this, we need to know what is the Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus of the reservoir. And finally, we need to know how much strength is needed to disintegrate the sand from the, from the rock. So what influences this, this is the UCS. UCS is the uniaxial compressive strength and the friction factors. All this, when calculated for a particular rock type, formation with and with proper, proper calibration defines the earth, mechanical earth model. Now we get the mechanical earth model, which is defining uh, typically how strong the reservoir is and what forces are required to disintegrate the rock and enable the sand to sand particles to, to come out of the matrix and get produced to the surface. So how do we do this? How do we get these parameters? So to get these parameters, uh, we, have, we, we have different uh, logs which we can do. And, and then we can do lab, uh, lab, laboratory studies to find out the strength. So the basic logs which we use is the dipole sonic logs. From the dipole sonic logs, uh, what is, is the sonic log is basically a sonic, uh, sonic log, which is a sound log. So you transmit a sound through the reservoir and measure its transit time. So what you're looking at is the compression slowness. So the transit time will give you in effect the strength of the rock. The stronger the rock is, the transit time is going to be faster. So uh, typically uh, as a thumb rule in oil field, if you say that if your transit time, if your compressional transit time is less than 90, then we say the reservoir is very strong and does not need sand control. So if it is between 90 microseconds per feet to 110, you say that it is in the transitional zone. And if your transit time is greater than 110 microseconds, uh, then you say that uh, it is a weak reservoir. Okay, so what we are looking at is both the compressional and the shear waves. So VP and VS are the compressional and shear waves. You also look at uh, a third type of wave. Uh, rock mechanical studies, what do they involve? They basically to evolve, to uh, evaluate the critical drawdown pressure and the core data properties, UCS. So the CDP evaluation can be done by taking a core into the laboratory and uh, subjecting it to core flows. And uh, by UCS, we can get the UCS, we can get by triaxial uh, loading test. And uh, borehole stability direction, you need to determine the angle of maximum horizontal stress. 
So how do we get this uh, direction? You can run uh, formation imaging log, imaging logs, uh, FMI, and uh, from the FMI we can detect the the drilling induced fractures and the breakouts. The so drilling induced fractures occur when the mud weight is uh, much higher than the reservoir uh, pressure. So because of this, uh, because of this difference in pressure, you have uh, fractures created in the reservoir. So these fractures generally propagate in a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of minimum horizontal stress. So once you know the direction of your, uh, your drilling induced fractures, you know that uh, this is the direction of your uh, minimum horizontal stress and perpendicular to it will be your maximum horizontal stress. Similarly, uh, breakouts occur when your mud weight is very low compared to the formation pressure. It's the reverse of your uh, breakout. Breakout is reverse of your drilling induced fractures, and it is perpendicular to the direction of the fractures. So, with from this, you can determine the direction of your uh, stresses, and uh, to evaluate the the magnitude of the stresses, uh, we need to go with uh, if you have done a, a mini frac in the in the formation, then from the mini frac you can come about with a with an estimation of your uh, minimum horizontal stress. Similarly, if you have done uh, other uh, leak off test, extended leak off test, from that also you can uh, you can uh, determine your directions of stresses. So typically, this is how it is. So you have two wells here, well A and well B. So well B is uh, drilled in the direction of your minimum horizontal stress. Whereas uh, your well A is drilled in a direction which is along the maximum horizontal stress. So if you fracture uh, this well B, you will find that you have uh, you have multiple fractures along the length of the horizontal hole. Whereas uh, in uh, well A, which is along the maximum horizontal stress, the fracture propagates in the same direction as the well. So you have one big fracture. So typically uh, in, uh, in shale, uh, we go for uh, drilling in uh, the minimum horizontal uh, stress direction, which is the most stable, and you, uh, you have multiple fractures in this well to enhance your production. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So uh, critical, uh, CDP based sign control. CDP. Uh, so typically, I we were talking about CDP based sign control. So what we need to ensure in this CDP based sign control is uh, there is no sand which is being disintegrated from the formation and coming into the well bore, and in effect, uh, you will see no sand on the surface. But what are the challenges here? So you are reducing your well potential. Uh, and as I told you even before, your CDP increases with the reservoir pressure, but as you deplete the reservoir, your CDP is going to reduce. So uh, you need a regular calibration of your CDP. And your water cut, with your increasing uh, water cut, your UCS decreases, so your CDP again will drop. So in effect, your CDP will have to be calibrated regularly through the life of the web. So uh, CDP-based sand control have these pros and cons. Uh, we are looking at, uh, we are looking at how do you come up with the CDP. You have the, your mechanical earth model. From there, you are calibrating your reservoir uh, rock mechanical parameters. And then you calculate the stresses near well board. So you have your, uh, your maximum horizontal stress, your minimum horizontal stress, you know your directions, and you know the inclination of your well. And from the inclination of your well at the well board, you need to calculate the stresses. So this can be done by uh, developing a Mohr circle. And from there, you come up with the stresses at the well board. And then uh, you, you have information of Poisson's ratio across the formation. So what you need is your uh, critical rod on pressure across the entire length. 
the critical drawdown pressure is not uniform. It is not the same all through your reservoir. So if you see here, there are some highs and there are some lows. So looking at this, uh, we know that uh, these areas where your CDP is high uh, will not uh, disintegrate. Whereas here, this is a weak section. And uh, if you perforate in this area, you may, you may produce sand immediately. So typically, even uh, when you do selective perforation, you select uh, intervals, uh, intervals where your CDP is high and perforate them so that you don't get sand. Okay. So again, I discussed this in the in the previous slide itself. We need to capture this data of CDP with time, and uh, more rock and formation will start producing sand with time. So with time the whole uh, initially you may be getting sand only from here but when the pressure reservoir pressure depletes you will see the whole section start to produce sand so this concept is also used for selective perforations as i told you in your previous slide okay so this is basically the the critical drawdown pressure graph so if you see here so in this section here in the vertical axis you have the flowing bottom wall pressure and here you have the reservoir pressure your reservoir pressure is coming down and uh, initially this will be your uh, available critical drawdown pressure so you have a pretty high critical drawdown pressure uh, which is almost half your reservoir pressure flowing bottom wall pressure yeah then when you reduce your reservoir pressure, as your reservoir is being depleted, uh, at this point, or this is the only uh, drawdown available to you. And as you go even further down, you will see that at this point, which is the critical reservoir pressure, you have no drawdown available for sand-free production. At, any, at, at a drawdown greater than this, you will, uh, at this point, you will see uh, sand production even at a PSI drawdown. So there is no drawdown available for you to have sand-free production at uh, the critical reservoir pressure. So this is a key point for you. So when your reservoir pressure goes below your critical reservoir pressure, there is no more drawdown available for you to produce sand-free. So at this point, you will definitely need to have a sand control either on surface or subsurface okay so uh, the philosophy of oriented perf uh, perforation we already spoke about it in a previous slide so the fracture propagates perpendicular to the minimum horizontal stress and uh, in the direction of maximum horizontal stress is very good for propagation of fractures so if you want to uh, fracture the well then you you perforate in the direction of the maximum horizontal stress so that you have very good uh, fracture propagation. Uh, whereas if you want to have a stable hole, you have to perforate in the direction of minimum horizontal stress. Okay. So now uh, we talk about uh, the next test which we do with a core sample. We need to get a uh, PSD. What's PSD? PSD is particle size distribution. So uh, what is particle size distribution? So it's a semi-log plot here. You have the cumulative weight percent on your uh, y-axis and your equivalent diameter in microns of the sand, sand particles in the x-axis. So it is one to thousand uh, here. It is, it's in microns. And this is the uh, cumulative weight percent. So what we say is with D10, D10 is the 10 percentile point. So all particles which fall in D10 are above the size of 100 microns in this case, 100 and, uh, 150, 180 microns in this case. And uh, D95 is, is all the particles above the size of, uh, this is D9, it falls in D95. So you have uh, 
you have two uh, basic, uh, basically it's the three parameters which we get from the PSD. One is the uniformity coefficient, which is the D40 by D90, and the sorting coefficient, which is D10 by uh, D95. The uniformity coefficient tells you how uniform your sand particles are. So the more uniform your sand particles are, the easier it is for you to design a filter through which your sand cannot pass. And sorting coefficient is the, the difference in size between the smallest particle to the largest particle. So the sorting coefficient is, uh, is, is also similar to uniformity, only it gives you the range of uh, your particle sizes. If the range is very high, once again, it's very difficult for you to uh, design a sand control for the huge range. So these are the two uh, parameters we look at. And the third parameter we look at is the, is the fines content. So if your fines content is greater than, uh, 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 fines content are the particles which are below the size of 44 micron. So if your, science, uh, if your fines content are, uh, is also greater than 10%, uh, then it's very difficult for you to stop these fines. So, and if you stop these fines, you will end up in uh, end up with uh, with plugging your screens. So, uh, basically, what we do is we get the PSD data and see whether the sand is well sorted. Which, if it is well sorted, the the difference in size between the largest particle and the smallest particle will not be great, as you see in this uh, vertical graph. And if it is a smooth graph as here, then it is very poorly uh, sorted. You will have a very high uh, sorting coefficient and a very high uniformity coefficient. So the typical numbers we are looking at is D40 by D90. If it is lesser than five, you can go with a, with a sand screen and not uh, go for uh, gravel pack. And uh, sorting coefficient, you're looking at 10. For uh, anything below 10, you can, uh, you can go with a screen. So this is required. So this uh, sand, this PSD will help you to select your downhole sand control. So where do you get it? You get your PSD uh, data from your course. You can also use the offset uh, field data if you're not having the course for that particular well. You calculate your uniformity and sorting coefficient. You define the fines. Generally, the general definition in most of the field is anything less than 44 micron. Is all these particles are fines. And uh, finally, you do an economic analysis and uh, then you come with the uh, sand control selection. So, what are the different types of sand control, uh, downhole sand control that we can apply? You can have a slotted liner. Slotted liner is basically only to uh, stop collapse of your formation. And the, the slots are generally larger than the smallest uh, particles. So it allows the fines to move and it, it stops the bigger particles. And conventional sand, uh, standalone screens you can design. If your uh, sorting coefficient is, uh, is less than five and your uh, less than 10 and your uniformity coefficient is less than or equal to five. Uh, so if you, if you have premium screens, these are metal mesh screens. So these are these have a greater tolerance than your conventional wire wrap screens. And in these screens, you can go with uh, with uh, less than uh, ten uh, uniformity coefficient and design a screen for that. Anything above that, if you want to control sand downhole, is gravel pack. And the gravel pack will definitely give you a very high skin. And in fields, I've seen even forty to sixty the range of skin being even 40 to 60. So typically you can see the production will not even be 10 to 20% of the well's potential. So if you have a, a big reservoir with, uh, with, with uh, large reserves, then you can go for a frack pack, which is the Rolls-Royce or Mercedes of uh, sand control. It will give, uh, give you both the sand control as well as uh, stimulation of the reservoir. So this way you can avoid the skin and you can produce the well better, but your investment is going to be very high. So at this point, I will hand over to the next speaker. Joe will take over from me. Is Joe around? 
Thank you, much, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep, uh, I'm here. Yeah, do you can share. Uh, how do I go out of sharing? Uh, hello, guys. I now I like to introduce Joanny. He is surface sand management expert and having experience of more than eighteen plus years all across the globe. He is associated with us as a senior petroleum consultant and sand management advisor. It's really great chance for you all guys to learn the the cons all the concepts of surface sand management and and you can ask your queries in chat box whatever you have. So yeah, hand over to join. Hi, are you able to view my screen? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I guess there was a, a question as well in one of the chats that uh, uh, which which is the best sand control uh, and how 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 do we get uh, uh, to a, uh, to a decision that which sand control to use now here here is a here is a very small or summarizing table on that we cannot cover the entire thing but this table covers uh, most of the parts so let's let's say that there are few sand control types which we are uh, which we know conventionally like frac pack gravel pack and sand screens and then as uh, Mr. Babu just said, that there's a concept called no sand control, where you restrict your uh, CDP or critical drawdown on pressure. And then finally, in the bottom, you see no sand control. That is, you don't deploy any of these mechanical filters and screens. You get the production of sand on the surface, and uh, then which is we call surface sand management here. And then you start producing the wells. So technically, technically, if you see if I'm uh, doing any frac pack, that will have a negative skin. So this first column is of the skin. The second column here is on the uh, initial capital expenditure for any of these systems. And the last one is how much can you uh, uh, generate the revenue or the profit or the oil production you can get. So if you look at the first column of the skin, of course, frac pack will give you a negative skin, which is best if you look at the formation. But parallelly, it is a high capex as well, because it's spending it, it spends a great amount of palm uh, rig time and everything when you are planning a frac pack. Though it gives a high revenue uh, in high production revenue. <clears throat> The second is a gravel pack, and we oh, most of us know uh, a gravel pack designing part and things, but maybe not know that we don't know that gravel pack is the one which creates a positive skin as well. Again, this is also a high capex because it utilizes rig time. You have to get into the structure or construction of the well for a gravel pack, and the revenue therefore is low to moderate. Sand screens. They, they do have a positive sand uh, skin, uh, but not, uh, uh, not as high as uh, uh, gravel pack. Now, just for everyone, a positive skin means that you are getting lesser production. But because you are getting a lesser production, it's a moderate capex as well. And the revenues are low to moderate. Finally, you have got no sand control, but restricting your critical drawdown pressure. So you're not getting any skin across the formation. You are not get, uh, taking any restriction at the formation. But just because you are restricting the drawdown, you are not flowing the well at its full potential 
as mentioned by Mr. Babu before. So your capex is very low because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to apply any new machinery, any new equipment. Uh, if you just drill the well and start producing, you save a lot of capital expenditure. But uh, at the same time, you get a low revenue as well. And finally, you have got that surface sand management where you invite sand to surface. You don't get any skin due to sand. This has got the lowest capex because uh, you just, uh, I mean, this is a similar like no sand control because you're not uh, spending, you're just spending a little amount in terms of your calculations or some surface handling equipment. And again, not the highest, but a high production revenue. So the question was uh, that what is the best strategy on sand control selection? My answer for that would be the best strategy is you look to all the types of sand control and try to see that which of this for your particular field gives you a highest revenue. And that is where your selection can come into picture. Just by saying that frack pack is the best because it gives a negative sand control, you might be compromising it because maybe in your field, the flow rates of the wells might be less. The amount of money you might be spending on doing those frack pack might not deliver a very good NPV at the end of the day. So it's just a very short summary to explain this, but uh, this is a slide saying that is sand control only solution? And that's where our topic starts that no sand control is not the only solution. And let me go to surface sand management in this case. So what is surface sand management? So, Sand management or surface sand management uh, is an operating concept in which traditional sand control means are not normally applied and production is managed through monitoring and control of well pressure, fluid rates and sand and flux. So one of the things which Mr. Wabu explained was CDP and the other, if you are inviting sand on surface, you just need to have some monitors and sensors on the surface to understand how good or how bad is the uh, sand uh, affecting my facility and will I be able to manage it at surface or not? Just, I just want to get a clarity on that to everyone. We always talk about controlling sand downhole. Why do we always talk about controlling sand downhole? Because we don't want this sand to come on surface and block my facility or, or constrain my facility or uh, give uh, damage to my facility. But if I know that what are the limitations this is coming up with, how much can it uh, uh, can it deteriorate my facility, I can manage it accordingly. And I might reduce my capex, I might increase my production in that sense. Now, surface sand management has proven to be an effective tool in various regions like North Sea, Canada, and even Southeast Asian region. I worked in few of these regions as well myself, as this has led to the generation of highly favorable well skin factors because of self cleanup associated with the episodic sand burst that take place with sand production. Now that is something which I really want to highlight here, especially people from reservoir engineering might more be interested in this second point. Just imagine there is a, 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 there is a, a well in which you are increasing the radius of the well without doing anything. What we want is, uh, if you remember that uh, particular uh, Darcy's concept where RE by RW is a term which comes. And if more the RW, better the, uh, better the, uh, productivity of uh, the well and just imagine I am producing sand producing sand producing sand so I'm enlarging my well bore now I'm not saying this happens everywhere but this is also one of the concepts where people have seen that while producing sand at surface actually the productivity of their well has increased and uh, why why has it increased maybe because Sometimes uh, when you produce the sand, the sand is of a type where it just uh, blocks everything or falls on the well board. But at particular times, 
the way the sand production happens is that it just happens for a while and then it forms a stable hole. It happens for a while and forms a stable hole. And that's where you can see that a self cleanup is done and uh, uh, you, you get an increase in production without doing anything. Uh, now, when we talk about uh, how uh, I was just talking about that we need to do surface sand management without any risk to the surface facility. So let us assume that this is a surface facility. Those who are not aware, there's a formation, uh, uh, the sand control, just for example, if it is here, then there's a well conduit, the valves and trees, pipings, chokes, desanders, pump, pipeline, and to the tank storage. Now just imagine if I know exactly that what is the amount of sand being produced throughout this facility and if I know with what velocity is this sand being produced, I know my hotspots instantly in that case. I know that if the sand uh, particles uh, uh, or sand concentration uh, are dropping, sorry, sand velocities are high at any particular point. That is, they are impacting my metal at a larger speed and as more proning on metal loss or erosion. And if I know that velocity at a particular point is decreasing or it's a minimum, that means those are the spots which are our deposition spots. So I might have a risk of deposition at these spots. So if you see your well conduit can be one of the deposition uh, 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 deposition prone area. Or if you look at the uh, pumps here, this could be one of the area where uh, uh, velocities are high or at the chokes of velocities are high. So pumps and chokes are the ones which are more prone to erosion. So I, and if as long as I know that what sort of metal loss or issues are happening with them, can I change them after every uh, two years or they, I can manage with them for next few years, a few months, I, I will have a plan to change them and I can manage everything on the surface because I understand that what is the velocity and what is the erosion rate happening all along this. So this is a very, uh, uh, in short, very uh, uh, the very concept of optimized risk free production on surface sand management. Okay, we were talking about erosion. Let's come to erosion, which is a very important thing in terms of the safety of the entire facility. Now, just imagine how is this erosion happening? I mean, when we say that sand particles are hitting and there's a metal loss happening in a pipe, how is it happening? So if it is a ductile material uh, and usually all the carbon steel pipes, which, what we use in our industry and all the facilities are ductile, uh, are ductile in nature. So as you see the erosion, uh, a, a particle, let us assume this black one is a particle, it's in hitting, hitting our material. So if you, if you are hitting at an angle, you're scooping out, just imagine while you are doing your gardening and you hit your uh, uh, gardening tool uh, on the ground at an angle because you have to scoop out some of that soil out. This is what the exact mechanism is. So next time when you see anybody scooping out anything, so just imagine that this is how the erosion or the sand particles scoop out the very, very small uh, uh, molecules or the structures of uh, uh, metal in a solid and at an impact. So what are the three or four things which, on which erosion is dependent? Is the material property, the property of the material here that is ductile in nature. The density, the density of this solid which is coming in, the higher the density uh, and the more stronger the, uh, the, uh, the sand is, more scooping or more metal loss it can do. Impact velocity, with how much impact or momentum is it hitting it? 
and the angle of impact. That's one of the very important thing, the angle of impact. Just imagine if you want to scoop a particle, if you uh, scoop a soil, and I ask you, rather than going at an angle, go at a zero degree, just perpendicular to this, you won't be able to scoop anything. And that's where this concept comes as well. But it is very opposite when a particular uh, material is brittle because a brittle material is uh, has a different property which breaks or uh, i mean i don't want to go into mechanics uh, um, on materials but uh, uh, it it breaks it has a different breaking mechanism which is more related to tensile stresses rather than the other stresses so in in this case it it is mainly dependent on the uh, on the uh, on the force which is being applied and it's just like a glass or something so if you want to break a glass which is a duck uh, which is a brittle in nature you don't have to scoop it out you just hit it anywhere and it will definitely break same is like with ceramics uh, there are many component and equipment within the oil field which use ceramic because ceramic is a strong material but we need to understand that it is a brittle material as well. So any impact on that might break it as well. So uh, the, uh, it's just a quick one for you to understand which color solid will have the least impact of erosion for same velocity and material type. So mm, nothing to say much, but uh, uh, because I've already explained on this, but those who have still not understood that concept, it is the least impact will be for the green one because this is going perpendicular assuming this is a ductile material so because it is in a perpendicular direction it's not in an angle direction just imagine for most uh, and just imagine that keyword scoop you cannot scoop anything out of here while you are doing this so so this is will have a least impact and this is actually a myth even some experienced people in the industry sometimes do feel that if it is a 19 degree hit you will get the maximum erosion but that's not the case what are the leak what are the weak links uh, in our surface facility which actually uh, are more prone to erosion uh, and if you if you look at uh, uh, what what is the most important thing which is impacting us is uh, because material property almost remains same everywhere solid density it's the same sand which is coming down hole to the surface so the two things which vary a lot is the angle and the impact velocity so so the places where velocity changes or places where or the locations where this angle of impact changes are more prone to erosion and these are the uh, uh, three main component within on the surface like reducers angular bends and chokes which which are most prone to and also the pumps which i showed you last slide which are more prone to erosion as long as you are able to handle this you are young you are able to calculate how much the erosion uh, uh, rate is happening in these that should be good enough to for you to handle sand i i think uh, uh, in the next session um, abhishek will cover on the erosion of rates using our sand management software. But I'm just letting you know the concept of it right now. And the second concept, which is the risk which we have, is a deposition risk. So that is uh, that comes uh, uh, with uh, a definition called critical velocity. And if you look at the figure which I have shown below. So just imagine and let's let's start. Let's start uh, from the bottom rather than going from the top, though the figure says uh, going from the top. But let's start from the bottom. We have got a dispersed flow wherein both sand and the uh, liquid is uh, flowing together. Now, if I decrease my flow rate, or the velocity decreases what will happen eventually is a scouring sort of stuff will take place where some heavier particles might start getting deposit but some lighter particles will still keep moving and they will uh, they will uh, start forming like 
a sort of tunes while they are moving. And this is something which you usually see in a lot of pipelines all along the uh, all along the world. And then you have got the moving dunes because now you have decreased the velocity more. And now even those smaller particle sizes are still flowing. But while they are flowing, they are moving as well. Just imagine um, we might have read in uh, geography while, while we were in uh, our primary school that they are moving dunes in uh, deserts and it's the same concept wherein they slowly move all along and this is what ha happens and finally you have got a stationary bed your velocity is such of the entire system that it's not able to impact impart any force and all everything is stationary here so what happens is your liquid is flowing at a very small rate but all and your entire sand is uh, deposited. So critical velocity is the minimum velocity to keep particles in suspension, which is mainly occurring in horizontal or high angle well section. So th th this is this is like uh, nowadays people are more moving towards horizontal wells and highly deviated wells. Even if you have sand control or no sand control, these calculations still become important that we need to we need to consider that Will there be any deposition if sand is produced? The headers and pipelines on the surface or even tanks uh, which are there on the surface. So uh, there are flow regime boundaries. I don't want to go into those details, but this is just to show that uh, if, if you look uh, on the velocity and the uh, uh, pressure drop, and if you go from the right, as uh, this is going from right to left here is same like going from bottom to top here. So as your velocity decreases, decreases, if it was no sand, only pure liquid, you see your pressure drop decreases, decreases until zero, even to a certain point. But on such a system where there's a bed flow and fully suspended flow, after a certain while, because of the nature, because of the nature of uh, this stationary bed and moving dunes, you will see a little increase in the uh, pressure drop. OK, now uh, let's come to what are the components uh, of surface sand management or the equipment we use. We have been talking a lot that, OK, we should be knowing that how much sand concentration is there on the surface or what should be my PST on the surface as uh, Mr. Baba also mentioned. But let me give you a little concept on what actually does sand concentration means. So sand concentration is, this is one of the ways to represent or to understand uh, the sand production. And that is mass of sand produced per unit volume of liquid. And we call it as a, the unit is PPTB, pounds per thousand barrel. So what it is, suppose you are producing 500 barrels of uh, uh, liquid per day. And on that, you are producing one pound of sand. So your concentration is one pound per thousand barrel. Uh, uh, your concentration is uh, uh, two pounds per thousand barrel because this concentration is in 1,000 barrels. So if you're producing 500 barrels, you just multiply it by 2, so it will be 1,000 barrels. And 1 pound multiplied by 2, it will be 2 pounds per 1,000 barrel. OK, some of you might be imagining, oh, I'm producing 1,000 barrels. You know, one barrel is a very big 260 liters of tank, uh, 260 liters of that uh, 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 water, water uh, barrel and you're producing 1,000 barrels. So how severe is if I just put one pound of sand in that? People might imagine, oh, this is nothing. It's just one pound in 1,000 barrels. But mind it, even 10 pounds or 50 pounds per 1,000 barrel at those speed of 20 meters per second, because 20 meters per second or 10 meters per second speed is almost like 90 kilometers per hour of speed that really, really erodes and gets a lot of metal loss. So these, so that's why measuring the concentration and the velocity, which I mentioned before, is very important. What are the ways through which we can measure that? 
their manual sampling you can manually take them you can heat uh, the sample so that all the liquid is gone and then you can measure the surface uh, how much sand is coming and then you can convert it into ppdb uh, a similar mechanism this is a mobile mechanism there's a stationary lab mechanism as well where you separate the sand all along the sieve and uh, then uh, you take this filter and you put it in this oven and you get all the uh, deposition of the liquid out and what is a dry sand you measure that and you know that the sand suppose you have collected from a five liter of a bottle so you can convert that into pptb and then there are some advanced uh, equipment which actually just uh, get connected to your well and they just do this all these mechanisms separately uh, because uh, anyways there is a challenge uh, if i've got a uh, liquid will I can do this but if I've got a gas I cannot do this so there are special equipment which can uh, which can have your uh, sand concentration for gas wells as well particle size distribution we, which uh, Mr. Babu just mentioned and we were telling uh, and he told detail but this is an equipment which actually does a particle size distribution to those who don't know you take the sample uh, or the sand here and you you provide a good uh, uh, vibration and shaking to this entire unit so what happens is it sieves out these are sieves of different sizes or you can say filters of different sizes here is starting right the highest one at the uh, top and the uh, and the ones with a with a very fine filtration at the bottom and once you do that shaking what happens is these uh, the entire sand uh, which you have given distributes along as per the sizes and there's that's where you get the particle size distribution and this is this is one and very conventional way of doing that uh, people still uh, adopt a lot of uh, uh, psd on uh, psd data and they base their sand control on this the other quick way is to put a laser particle size analyzer where you don't have to shake or you don't have to uh, do any calculations you just put in your sample here and it will provide you an LPSA data, PSD data. Okay, now let's focus that what are the monitoring devices on the surface which tell us how much sand are we producing? I mean, sand is inside a pipe. You cannot see it is flowing, but you have to have some sensors which can tell you that they, this, there is sand being produced. And devices, there are three devices. I'm I'll, Again, I'm not going to very detail but uh, these are uh, the first one is the sand probe which you see here it's intrusive what we see is by intrusive is you will have to do some uh, mechanical work cut or drill a hole here and then try to get these devices you have to do some extra construction work within the facility to install this device now there's a probe here and this probe is a very like a uh, uh, it, it's an alloy uh, which is a very light material, delicate material. And once the sand comes, it hits it and metal loss uh, in this uh, particular alloy starts happening. So as it starts happening uh, uh, due to the resistance, you will come to know that the, uh, that the resistance uh, uh, of this particular metal is increasing. That means there is a metal loss happening and that is the re uh, that is a direct indication that some sand production is happening. So this is a direct measurement. You cannot foul this measurement. No, there is no sand production. You are you are observing a metal direct metal loss here. This is more effective for gas wells because why the, the velocity with which gas wells produce is much much higher than uh, of any liquid or multi-phase flow wells, and this gives a very good indication on those. And the last part, which is a little. Uh, what to say uh, limitation on this is a temp temperature dependent device but nowadays people have started using non-intrusive devices which gives them a much better understanding and one of them uh, i'll start from the right one of them is acoustic sand monitors and by acoustic you mean sound what they do is they hear the sound of the impact they hear the sound of the impact and uh, uh, of the sand and uh, that is uh, where they try to see whether there is a sand uh, production coming in or not the sound signals are converted to electrical signals and that's how it happens 
finally we have got uh, uh, what we are talking about uh, anywhere erosion or acoustic sand is how much impact is happening and how much is the metal loss happening at the end of the day you need to see the metal loss because you don't need somebody to just uh, uh, the sand just uh, keep on doing that metal loss and uh, erode the pipe to such a way that it creates a hole or a leak here so one of the other monitoring device is a, a probe which actually measures the thickness of your pipe and uh, that is also on the basis of uh, an ultrasonic transducer but if you see if uh, i mean i've just zoomed it a lot but if this is your pipe wall thickness then it just uh, sends a signal and it tries to measure that what is the thickness so that is again a very interesting device which could tell you and a very helpful device which could tell you that how frequently or how good the metal loss is happening and uh, is there any uh, is there any uh, sand uh, impact happening at my facility or not okay so that was that was mainly on the surface sand management monitoring and a few concepts which i guess you must have been clear that why we are saying that uh, it is it's uh, easy to monitor deposition as uh, as long as i have got erosion calculations as strong as i have got deposition calculations i can easily have a good control over my entire facility with all these devices and monitoring equipment now the other thing which comes is okay we are saying that produce produce sand but how are you going to handle that sand okay just to give you some idea how much sand is produced in a sand producing well i worked in one of the southeast asian wells where we were producing almost 1 ton of sand per day from that particular platform from that particular field we were producing 1 ton of sand per day so so the challenge there was not on the erosion or deposition but challenge there was what do we do with 1 ton of sand per day how do we handle it because we are producing it every day even if you miss it for 7 days you have got 7 tons of heat where do you take it in the offshore area and that's where separators accumulators washing of the sand and disposal on site or bagging takes uh, comes into picture i'm not going into details of these because i might spend almost one day if i want to get all this to you but this is just on a high level that if you want to handle sand at surface first you'll have to separate it and for separation there are filters there are hydrocyclones there are vessels which can help you to separate then you will have to accumulate it there are sandscape storage tanks accumulators where this is accumulated then actually you have to wash because it still is stick with some crude oil uh, which is sticky and it is and the oil is still sticking to it and then finally there is a disposal which is on site or bagging uh, uh, where uh, sometimes on site if the clean if the sand is clean you can just dump it on the sea because anyways it's not harmful you have already uh, washed it but at times um, th that could be a surprise for you but sometimes the sand which is produced to the surface might even be radioactive so in that case you will have to do a bagging or sometimes there's uh, some special chemical stick to it and you can just do a chemical disposal and then dispose it anywhere so all this is just to let you know what are the challenges which we are facing while we are handling at surface and not every field will get all these challenges and not every time you'll have to accumulate 1 ton of sand per day you increase you can even increase production of your wells by 10 to 20% without any impact on handling or accumulation part i'll quickly go through these uh, components of surface sand management uh, in terms of separation system which we were just telling so if if you see this is one of the hydrocyclones what i was telling in terms of separation there are various hydrocyclones which are available in the industry and depending on usage uh, pressure drop and conditions you can design them then there are nowadays uh, Uh, one of the system is uh, when people are flowing through the tanks or the separators they deliberately say okay let this become my separation device they they just uh, 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 assume that all our all our tanks or uh, uh, or the tank or the separators can fill to a certain extent they always do that calculation and 
and they have devices or the jetting systems which can just vacuum out or suck everything out in one one button or just one system it takes only five to ten minutes to get everything out and then you have a clean sand or a clean whistle sorry and your entire sand has been handled then people also use some separation devices within the tanks or sometimes they use filtration unit as well each of these have different pros and cons but this is just to let you know guys that there are when we say that can sand beam handle at surface yes industry has gone to a level where new technologies are being developed to handle sand on surface okay i think this might be my uh, last two slides so if i'm if i'm really getting giving a boring lecture to all of you so it, i'm it's just two slides away so what do we do into a sand management study when you say okay you need to understand to handle we say that okay there's an existing facility just for example just for example uh, within india we we just recently were working on one of the fields which was a gas field and they were already producing sand since uh, since many years and now they wanted us to do an extensive uh, data uh, extensive sand management study that how can they handle sand or even if it's a new field the very first thing which you have to do uh, which you have been should be doing is an extensive data collection on subsurface and surface that means rock mechanics data and the surface sand management data then you need to define the risk erosion and deposition risk and of course now there are tools available our software sand master is one of the stuff but there are many other tools available which can tell you that erosion deposit what are the erosion deposition risks or the rock mechanics uh, risk that how much what's what's the cdp of that particular uh, formation and uh, is at that cdp it produces sand and how much will it produce the sand then you start producing sand and try to calibrate your calculations your erosion rate critical velocities you have tried to calibrate your cdp values then you select that what is the best tool to measure all along i mean during this process you might have used be using some tools on monitoring devices but at a particular point you will finally say okay these are the best tools which we can be used and finally you define operating envelopes again operating envelopes we will be uh, describing in the next session that at what rate and at what uh, uh, rate of liquid and what rate of sand or pptb can i uh, produce my facility without any risk and at the maximum profit so this is how a sand management study works in which uh, when people do re uh, really don't want to go with sand control or their sand control fails or their sand is not such that they can apply any sand control in that case such studies help a lot uh, finally uh, uh, strength weak uh, opportunity threat analysis on uh, surface sand management swat so the strength of such a strategy is there is no capex on uh, downhole solutions because you don't need to do anything a weakness is there's a lot of calculations and surveillance involved uh, which which of course uh, spends a little time opportunities you have got an increased production and threat is that if all the calculations which you are doing here and the, all the procedures which you are making are not implemented properly then there is a threat that you might damage your facility and that's where uh, our team our consultants come into picture on calculations and surveillance i think that's all from my side uh, if you have any questions and if you have posted them on the chat while abhishek will be presenting on his sand master part i'll i'll uh, uh, answer those and feel free uh, feel free to drop us an email anytime uh, thanks thanks a lot so now after the question and answer session i think uh... Dr. Raj, you can take over and do your part. Yeah, thank you, Sir Kumar, sir. So I just want to touch upon, like uh, we have recently established an ARMA chapter in IIT ISM. ARMA is quite known for geomechanics and uh, rock mechanics studies. 
especially in the US, it is very popular. So I would like to just give you a brief introduction about what is ARMA, what are their goals, what is uh, the eligibility criteria and those things. So I will just share a few slides and I hope all of you, if you are interested, please uh, send me an email and uh, you can join. Even we are going to start electing people who can be president, vice president, and other um, like uh, other officers uh, for ARMA IIT ISM chapter. So let me just start sharing my screen. Okay. So. I hope you, you can see this. Give me one minute. Okay. Yes, I yes sir. You can see, right? Okay. So basically, our new ARMA Rock Mechanics Association student chapter is established recently. And uh, there is a website I have designed for uh, the same. And uh, basically, ARMA Rock Mechanics Association is a professional and international engineering and scientific society which wants to promote interaction between different stakeholders like uh, specialist uh, practitioners, scholars, educators, academicians, basically in the area of uh, rock mechanics and geomechanics. Our vision is to serve with members and a broader public uh, to be recognized as a multidisciplinary advancements and applications in rock mechanics. So you, you have already seen that um, uh, the Greenfield, uh, Greenfield team talked about like rock mechanics where we talked about uh, like stresses and orientation of uh, stress directions. So we talked about those things basically in ARMA. Our current chapter is established in March 2021. We are like 25 students right now. And uh, we are planning to, to have activities like webinars, a student paper competition. Yeah, you know, there was a like, team from mining department which owned like $500 prize recently in ARMA, one of the ARMA conferences. And we are trying to collaborate with different um, organization. For example, this workshop was organized uh, in collaboration with the SPE. And our goal is to disseminate and exchange technical knowledge, especially in field of rock mechanics and geomechanics. What are the membership as eligibility? Like yeah, you have to be a full-time college student. If you have uh, your interest aligned in rock mechanics and those things, you are more than welcome. Even if you are not interested, you can come look at our presentation and uh, joins for some workshops uh, or webinars. If you get interested, you can definitely join. What are the privileges? You can participate in different activities. Like um, recently, there was a photographic a photography activity conducted by like ARMA main chapter. Not only that, we organize some field trips. We plan to organize some field trip events and something like that. And then now the next thing is I'm looking for um, electing president, vice president, treasurer, event coordinator, public relation head and secretary. So that term will be for one academic year. If you are interested, send me an email at armaiitism at gmail.com. What should be qualification parameters for the um, officers? They should have a good um, standing with the chapter. Since we are starting right now, we don't know your standing, but uh, um, you can send me your resume or your uh, SOP regarding like why you are interested in joining this uh, these positions. You We can look into it. And if you find it uh, interesting, we will definitely um, interview you for these positions. Mm. So these are the other parameters which we will um, you, we will look into in our next year um, qualification system. But uh, right now, these are the only things I'm looking for. And for this, I would like to thank everyone. If you are interested, please send me an email at armaiitism at gmail.com. And uh, we can like definitely set up a meeting and talk more extensively about ARMA IIT ISM chapter.
so i will not take more time from you guys and i will give back my sharing rights to like uh, babu sir so thank you everyone so if you are interested please send me an email i definitely urge everyone to join um we will conduct some good uh, webinars and which might be give you an opportunity to interact with the international speakers mainly most of these speakers will be from us or somewhere else uh, so you will get an opportunity to collaborate and network with them so that's all i have to say thank you everyone and now we can take questions if uh, anybody has collated the questions you can pose it and joe and i will try to answer to our best of our knowledge here and even you can uh, unmute your audio and ask your questions uh, excuse me sir yeah uh, so like uh, as you uh, as you just uh, taught us about the uh, various techniques of sand control like in the gravel pack uh, we found out that the uh, due to the gravel pack uh, we had to encounter very high skins like 40 uh, plus in some cases sir uh, do we still use gravel pack in the industry or is it just uh, like some old technique which was used like uh, is there some advantage or some case where it would be actually good to use gravel pack uh it's a very good question yeah i think uh, it has been an age old uh, technique uh currently there have been lot of uh, lot of improvements in the way you deliver your gravel pack so if you do a really good gravel pack job the skin is supposed to be very low but uh, usually that does not happen and that is the reason why the skins are very high so uh, if you ask me whether whether they still go with gravel packs uh, yes they do go, to, uh, go for gravel packs when the when the the sand production potential is very high and uh, you have lots of fines so you cannot have any other filtration medium medium other than a gravel pack and if you want to go with the, with the frac pack then your investment becomes very very high so unless your reserves justify it you will not be able to undertake a a, a frac pack in these wells so in these cases you go with a gravel pack so it's a, it's 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 basically a compromise between cost and production just to give you just to give you an uh, example in this a uh, few decades back gulf of mexico used to use a lot of gravel pack they used to optimize a lot on that and they started getting low skins still positive skins but today if you talk to the operators in gulf of mexico everybody says only about frac pack else nothing now they are trying to improve and because the entire industry there has gone towards that approach of frac pack what's happening it's getting their cost down as well so as long as uh, frac pack was uh, a little costly for them they were still going for gravel pack but now they have turned themselves into such a way that the frac pack which is a more technically competent technology is reducing is uh, getting into them with a cost reduction and they are now using that only okay sir okay. with crude uh, delivery systems like uh, you have an extended water pack so it's is just a, a compromise between a gravel pack and a frac pack you're not using the gel pad fluid you're not creating a fracture you're only pumping at a pressure higher than your frac pressure that is uh, yes, improvement on your uh, delivery of gravel pack yeah thank you babu sir so there is one more question like without sand control can we use artificial lift like srp srp uh, no you cannot use srp with uh, with sand production because your uh, downhole uh, your pump is going to get eroded very fast so in such cases you need to do a down on sand control an active downhole sand control
So there is uh, there is one more question. Uh, is it is it hard or it is difficult to handle the sand in the gas wells than in the oil wells? Gas wells, the velocities are higher, so erosion is higher. So that is an issue. So Joe can expand more on that. Now in gas fields, as uh, uh, Mr. Babu mentioned just now, that yes, you can have a high velocity. So the risk of erosion goes high. But at the same time, because gas has a low density as well, if you start using a hydrocyclone, that might give you a better separation efficiency as well. Yeah. So I've seen fields where there are gas fields and uh, the guys have just put uh, or included a desander or a hydrocyclone as part of every well. And they manage it good. They don't have any downhole sand control. They haven't done a big investment. They have just used a, a sand control, a, a hydrocyclone on the surface. And they have, when I was there on the field, they were producing that field since last 10 or 15 years with the same concept. So yes, gas is a challenge, but uh, is, is uh, uh, only on terms of velocity. Otherwise, mainly if you look at the deposition part, uh, I guess uh, uh, oil might be a greater challenge in terms of getting into pipeline or getting into horizontal well bore sections. I think Any we can more move questions? Uh, we can move to our yeah. next uh, uh, topic in want of time. Uh, and, can, uh, can we have a quiz uh, before the last sand master demonstration? Okay. Can you can go ahead with the quiz. Yeah. Yes. Guys, uh, enter this code Screen is very colorful. Guys, join fast.
Okay, let's start. Yes, let me be here. So, first question is the most important safety feature in surface sand management is first option calculation of erosion rate, B evaluation of critical velocity, use of hydrocyclones to separate sand, use of acoustic sand sensors. Correct answer is calculation of erosion rate. Moving to second question. Acoustic sand sensors are best suited at which location? End of a straight pipe, 45 degree bend, 90 degree bend, T bend. Acoustic sand sensors are suited at which location? end of a straight pipe, 45 degree bend, 90 degree bend and T bend. Correct answer is 90 degree bend. Third question, critical transport velocity is velocity at which sand deposition just starts, velocity below which sand deposits, velocity of highest sand particle, velocity needed for sand particle to get transported. Critical tra transport velocity is velocity at which sand deposition just starts. Velocity below which sand deposits, velocity of highest sand particle, velocity needed for sand particle to get transported. Correct answer is velocity below which sand deposits. Fourth question, erosion is maximum at what impact angle for a steel pipe? 0 degree, 90 degree, 60 degree and 45 degree. Erosion is maximum at what impact angle for a steel pipe? First option is 0 degree. Second option is 90 degree. Third option is 60 degree and fourth option is 45 degree. Correct answer is 45 degree. What is the first step of accessing sand control design or deciding on any sand management parameters like erosion or deposition? First option is sand density evaluation. Second option is sand concentration being produced per barrel of fluid or per MMSCF. PSD of sand, fine particles in sand. PSD of sand. So, So we have a leaderboard. Saurabh Kumar Sharma, Aisha Himanshu, Raj Prasar, and Shivangi Pati. These five are leading at the moment. We have eight more questions. So guys, uh, other guys, you have a lot of time. Joseph, meanwhile, if you like to answer or explain any questions, so please, sir, you can. Most important factor for sand control strategy. 
sand type, B economics, skin skin evaluation for E sand control type, or D none of the above. Most important factor for sand control strategy. First option is sand type. Second option economics. Third option skin evaluation for E sand control type, and D is none of the above. Yeah, as I mentioned uh, uh, during my uh, presentation as well, that economics play a very, very important role in any strategy implementation. So that's where the answer is. Thank you, Joseph. Which of these probes are most affected by temperature? First option is sand probe. Second, acoustic sensors. Third is UT thickness devices. And fourth is sand sieve apparatus. Should get a hundred percent on this because uh, I specifically mentioned about this during my presentation. So. Is sand probes. Which of the following are intrusive devices? Sand probe, acoustic sensors, UT measurements. This will get hundred percent. Which of the following are intrusive devices? First option, sand probe. Second option is acoustic sensor. And third is UT measurements. Which of these is not mechanical filters? First option, dual pole filtration units, sand loan, uh, sand loan screen, hydrocyclone, sand sieve. By mechanical filters, we mean here those who have a mechanical or physical mechanism to separate sand. Right. Filter is the catch. Oh, yeah, most of uh, answers are correct. Right, yeah. Hydrocyclone is not mechanical filter. There's no filter in a hydrocyclone. Exactly. Hmm. It's basically work on a centrifugal uh, application. So, yeah. I have a heterogeneous sand probe reservoir with different types of PSD in each sub intervals. What the best approach in terms of FDP? First, FDP means a field development plan. Yeah. First option, get core and thereby PSD of each sub interval, keeping it flowing till sand comes at surface. Drill some sacrifice, uh, sacrificial wells to understand sand flow behavior. Conduct frack pack from day one by default. When is the maximum sand deposition occurs uh, in a gas lift well? During shutdowns, during maximum gas lift conditions, when gas property changes during well startup.
Joseph, can you please uh, explain this question? Okay, in a in a uh, in when you start a well, you go from a very a, a small flow rate to the maximum slow flow rate, correct? When you start, you slowly flow the well, and then you go to a higher higher uh, rates. So just imagine if uh, I want to go from zero to thousand rate, but uh, at uh, 20, 200 or two fifty is my critical deposition rate. So by the time I reach two fifty, that's the maximum chances I will get the maximum sand deposition. Yes, very right. And even you have mentioned about the gas velocity. So guys, once uh, the operations will start, so gas velocity is very high. So deposition will reduce with a further time. And uh, we have last two questions and uh, we will, we will provide gifts to top three winners. So guys, just, just, just one thing to add. Most of the people in this question has got during shutdowns. That's a little uh, trick here because yes, you can imagine during shutdown, your, uh, your speed uh, of velocity decreases zero, but it just only for that one minute when you are doing the shutdown, but during startup, it takes a lot of time to start up a well. So that's where the trick goes. In this. Right. With the time, the velocity increases. So there is a very less chance of deposition. Corrosion can increase erosion rate by how much times? One to two times it's additive. So the erosion rate cannot increase by multiple times up to 10 times. None of the, uh, just to say that second is not the answer. Just, just for everyone's clarity. Uh, when you have corrosion, which is a part of metal loss and erosion also, which is a part of metal loss, the combination cannot be an addition of both. It's, it's usually multiple times. Thank you, sir. Guys, we have last question. Surface sand management helps is best in terms of no risk, less capex, less opex, minimal modeling and simulation. Capex is exp capital expenditure, which we do at the starting. Opex is operating expenditure, which you do throughout. So thank you guys. Let's see the leaderboard now. So we have three winners now. Saurav Kumar Sharma, Raj Parashar and AB. Uh, Nitesh, this is uh, Saurav Kumar Sharma, Aisha and Raj Parashar. Okay, yeah, I write some. Congratulations guys. Abhishek, sir, can you start from here? Okay, uh, thank you, Nidish. Uh, thank you, ISM team, first of all, for uh, such a warm welcome uh, at the start. And thank you for your time uh, to attend this session. Uh, let me just quickly share my screen. Uh, so I hope uh, you guys are able to view my screen now. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be stressing upon uh, the software that we have developed for uh, the sand management, which is called the Sand Master software. Uh, to start, uh, sand management, as uh, as already described by Babu sir and Joe, uh, can be divided into three parts. Uh, firstly, is the 
the rock mechanics where we develop the mem modeling well, uh, and we discuss about the well boost stability then uh, we have the amount of uh, of the, uh, then we predict the amount of sand which can be produced from the field or from the well uh, again the cdp evaluation and the study of field life then uh, uh, from the rock mechanics it comes to the sand control uh, there were various questions on the sand control uh, so and this is a study where we uh, where we use the separation using srt to uh, you know actually design or to evaluate the sand control methods uh, again sand control selection designing the sand control type i mean it's not just straight away you have to go with gravel pack you have to design uh, the gravel size uh, the uh, pumping technique etc uh, the same goes with the uh, uh, screens and frack pack as well uh, then you have to do the economic analysis. So uh, one thing I would like to stress upon and what I felt uh, uh, with the questions that were asked that uh, obviously when you are in your college days, uh, uh, you're thinking as a student, uh, you more stressing on the technical part or the technical stuff. But once you move to the uh, corporate sector, it's all about money. So economics is the thing which governs everything. It's uh, obviously technical part, everything comes into play, but the economics is the major uh, role player. So uh, again, we do the economic analysis and production benefits, and then we come to a conclusion that which sand control module will be the best suited for a particular field or a particular well. So these two modules, uh, what we uh, currently we do provide uh, as a company, we do provide consultancy, full-time consul uh, consultancy to various operators uh, on these two uh, modules. Uh, currently, the Rock Master, as you can see, uh, the symbol here, we are still in development of this software, uh, which will actually automate all this process. Uh, one more thing which I would like to tell you that in sand control module, uh, as uh, in one of the slides, Joe explained when uh, where he was uh, uh, comparing different uh, downhole sand control methods with no sand control. So we also give the client or the operator the uh, ability to evaluate that in case if he is not using a sand control, what will be the effect on the economics? So if you ask uh, that is uh, no uh, is uh, uh, including or improvising no sand control is a good option every time, uh, there is no absolute answer to that. I cannot say yes every time. I cannot say no every time. So you have to evaluate. You have to do the economics. And there where we help uh, the operators that uh they can choose between having a sand control and they can also choose or they can also see the economics involved with having no sand control and then they can decide the best strategy which is applicable for them after this we come to the sand master software this is a fully developed software which is used for surface uh sand management and also for you know sand management related uh, uh applicable at the downhole level so what is sand master sand master can help you design your uh, wells and surface, and it will help you in evaluating erosion, deposition, handling, and uh, now uh, it can also help you in uh, defining corrosion risk as well. So it, this is a software where you can define and you can evaluate uh, the effect of these risks on your facility and you can and how you can improve on it. Uh, that and that analysis can be done using this software. Then we have the sand management charts for operating envelope. So by operating envelope, I mean that obviously you can uh, do all the technical part again and uh, 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 see how much erosion deposition or corrosion or handling uh, is required in your facility. But again, what will you do of that information? With that information, you come to operating envelopes and with the operating envelopes, you can decide that what is needed to be done to improve on your production and your revenue and how much revenue can be generated uh, additional revenue can be generated uh, also it will give you the opportunity to define pumps jokes desanders and the calculations related with it so it's a it's like a complete software for your entire surface sand management uh, you can also do the project analysis and we also give the operators or the clients the facility to uh, you know uh, take out the component life that how much uh, for a particular uh, risk let's say erosion or deposition or handling uh, how fast a component uh, will degrade uh, so it's very useful for when when it comes to handling sand at surface and you have uh, um, 
component like bends and you have chokes. So th this is a very important feature uh, for those components. So uh, moving further, as I said, that uh, uh, Sandmaster is a software where you define the risk, you uh, do the analysis on the risk, and then you predict or uh, you know come to a conclusion that what is best suited for your facility with respect to sand management. So how do we start? We construct a model. This is an actual screenshot from the software. Uh, moving on, I will also show you the demo of the software. Uh, so you define a source where you define the PVT properties of the uh, fluid. You also define the sand uh, properties uh, by sand property uh, properties, uh, like uh, Babusar and Joe explained uh, the concept of a particle size distribution. So the entire PSD uh, data is entered into the source, and then we can define various components. By components, I mean pipes, vents. This is a reducer, uh, which is uh, you know uh, initially you have a, a certain ID, uh, and going forward it reduces the ID. Then you have chokes. This is a symbol for choke that we have used. Uh, we also have hydrocyclones. It is not included in this picture. I'll show you in the uh, in the software demo. So these are the various components that you can define and you can you know uh, design to design your entire facility right from your source or uh, the source can be at any point. It can be at the wellbow. It can be at the uh, wellhead. Uh, so you just need to enter the PVT properties at that particular place and the sand properties which is there at that particular place. So again. Flow rates, pressure, and temperature have to be defined. Sand properties, like I said, PSDs uh, have to be entered. Then uh, related uh, PVT parameters, which are uh, GOR, viscosity, surface tension, etc., which are present at each and every component of your facility, are actually calculated. Uh, obviously, you need to define the geometries of the components. For uh, like, for example, for pipes, you need to define the OD of the pipe, the ID of the pipe, uh, material type. Uh, angles, etc. So those all things have to be defined for each and every component, and then you can generate a model. So once you have generated a model, what you need to do is you need to define the risk. By risk, again, I mean erosion, deposition, sand handling, and corrosion risk. After you define the risk, you do the real-time risk analysis. Again, this is a screenshot from the software. You can see the erosion trend, the erosion uh, uh, calculation calculations are done for the entire facility you can get the mixture velocity and you know uh, these are just three uh, three things currently shown but there are like n number of features and graphs which can be generated by the software uh, then you have the psd curve this is a, a sort of psd uh, i mean this is a psd curve for uh, different places uh, of the facility i'll explain this in a more detail during the demo so uh, what we generate is we generate the PVT and the flow regime at each and every component. You can go to each and every component and you can see the PVT property of the fluid that is flowing at that particular component, the flow regime, which is, uh, you know, present at that, uh, in that component. Sand velocity is very important because after sand velocity itself, you will come to uh, calculations like erosion and uh, deposition, etc. Uh, so sand velocity calculations and uh, uh, graphs are there. Then you have the position uh, calculations and the position results. After that, um, the software will give you the erosion values, as you can see the graph here uh, present here. So you have the erosion values and the erosion parameters calculated by various correlations, uh, and it will show you for each and every component of your uh, of your facility. After you have defined and uh, you know uh, done your analysis on the uh, on the risk part. Uh, the next part is the prediction, the prediction with respect to the output, with respect to the incremental production or the production or, you know, uh, uh, life of a, uh, of a component or the failure of uh, the failure, failure analysis of a component. So all those things can be predicted by this software. Uh, a few uh, photos or the screenshots of the software. So here we have the critical transport velocity. Uh, Again, uh, uh, I'm not sure how much uh, uh, the, uh, the young engineers are aware, but uh, everything which is calculated or, you know, every formula which is uh, given are, I mean, are known as correlations. So depending, um, so for one thing, there's no set correlation. 
correlation. So every correlation that is made is based on a set of values or on uh, you know a particular field or maybe uh, five or six different fields. So if, uh, for each and every thing or each and every parameter, you can have multiple correlations which help you to get that parameter. So you need to decide that which correlation is best suited for your facility or your for, for your field or for your well. So again, uh, for each and every parameter, we have given the ability uh, to the user to evaluate the results basis on the basis of uh, multiple correlations. So for example, we have around five correlations present for critical transport velocity. As you can see that each correlation will give you a different value. And why it is? Because again, the correlations which are developed by these uh, scientists or engineers, those are again, uh, based on their experience their fields or maybe a number of fields or their region so again uh, the values shown are quite different so you need to evaluate you need to think or you need to see that which correlation is best suited for your uh, for your facility again then we have the deposition um, uh, deposition graph so here you can see the uh, critical tra uh, transport velocity uh, versus the liquid rate so what we do is we calculate the critical transport velocity given on the parameters, the input parameters for each and every particle which is defined in the uh, PST. So like uh, uh, Joe and Babu sir told you, there are finer particles, which uh, for example here, uh, if you can see here, these are two micron, three micron, four micron, going to 45 microns and even going up to 500 micron particles. So the PST which has been entered for this graph is from two microns to 500 microns. And for each and every particle, we have calculated the particle velocity, the critical transport velocity for each and every particle, which are depicted by these, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, colored curves. And then depending on the liquid rate at which you are flowing the well, we calculate the mixture velocity. So the mixture velocity graph is depicted by this dashed blue line. And for any value where this graph lies lower than the uh, critical velocity of a certain particle, that particle will get deposited in that particular component. Uh, I hope I'm making myself uh, clear uh, to reiterate. If the mixture velocity falls below, a simple concept, if the mixture velocity falls below, uh, the critical velocity for any particle size, that particle size will get deposited. So, for example, in this uh, in this component, which is I think a hydrocyclone, uh, no, uh, I think something some else is uh, something else is there. This is an elbow, or something. Yeah. So let's say for this elbow, the mixture velocity is greater than uh, the critical velocity of all the components. So none of the uh, uh, micron sizes or the uh, sand particles will get deposited in this particular component. But if you see this particular pipe. Here you can see that mixture velocity lies below the critical velocity for some of the particle sizes. So all the particle sizes uh, whose critical velocity is above the current mixture velocity will get deposited. The other particles which have critical velocity lower than the current mixture velocity uh, will get transported. So this is the type of analysis that can be done. Uh, then we have the erosion in pipe. I'll show you a live graph in the demo. Uh, demo uh, in the uh, software demonstration. Uh, here we calculate the uh, erosion in pipes, in bends, in uh, chokes, uh, in each and every component uh, on the basis of two correlations that we have right now. Uh, one is the Salama, the other one is the DNB correlation. Uh, also a special feature, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure how much uh, aware you guys are for uh, uh, on the industry softwares, but there is hardly any software which can give you a uh, corrosion plus erosion analysis on your entire facility. So this is one of a kind software where you can not only do the analysis on the erosion, you can also do the analysis on the corrosion part for your well and surface facilities. You can also uh, get the total as uh, one of the questions was there and Joe was explaining that corrosion and erosion are not always linearly uh, 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 you know, additional to each other. So uh, it will give you an idea that if you're having erosion plus corrosion in your uh, facility, how much will, uh, how, uh, how much should, uh, would be your total metal loss that will be happening in your uh, surface facilities or in your well. So again, this is a unique concept that we have 
came up with, uh, have come up with. All right. So till now, uh, what we have done is we have told you that what all, uh, what all are the risks and what all are the calculations or the technical part you can do with the software and how you can evaluate the erosion deposition and all the risks that are associated with sand management. But now, what do you, again, what do you do with that uh, uh, knowledge? What do you do? Uh, technically, you have gained everything, but how do you convert that technical knowledge into, you know, economics? So there we have developed a concept of operating envelopes. So this is, uh, uh, this is where I'll explain you how uh, does that work? And later on, I'll show you that uh, how it looks in the software. So let's, uh, no. okay. So let us consider uh, what is operating envelope. So operating envelope is a graph between sand concentration and your oil rate. Oil rate is on the X and sand concentration on the Y axis. So if we consider one bend and we consider the erosion risk for that bend, so only one component and only one risk that is uh, erosion for bend one. And when uh, this graph is generated between sand concentration and oil rate. So if your current flow condition, let's say for example, A or B uh, are lying below your graph, you are operating in a safe zone. That means uh, the software will ask you for, you know, uh, uh, what is your limit of erosion that you can allow. So if let's say, for example, you enter that I can allow up to 0.1 millimeter of erosion per year. So if uh, your current erosion rate calculated by the software is less than 0.1 millimeter per year, your operating point will lie below this, uh, below this curve, which will be either A or B. But if your current uh, erosion rate will be greater than the risk, uh, greater than the limit or the cutoff limit that you have defined, the operating point will be somewhere above this curve, which means that you are in the unsafe zone. So first of all, the first analysis you can do or you can show is that, okay, uh, right now with a certain metallurgy, a certain metal properties and uh, uh, component properties, you are in the safe zone. But now as an engineer, why won't you, uh, as an engineer and as a, as a corporate engineer, uh, uh, to be more precise, uh, why won't you uh, uh, do something in order, why shouldn't you do something in order to increase your production? You will always be fo uh, not forced, but you'll be always be asked to increase your production. So, but uh, again, when you'll do the analysis, you say that, okay, currently, let's say I'm operating at point B, but I do, if I go to point C, I'll be at a greater risk of erosion. So if you're designing a facility and for your current conditions, you find that C is in an unsafe zone. So what the software will help you to do is if you change the material or the design, or maybe the angle, of your particular component for which your uh, you are lying in the unsafe zone and maybe you can you are able to shift this graph from this point or from this place to you know a, a place above if you do this and you increase your production rate so with respect to this graph even if you are operating at point c you are operating in a safe zone you come to a safe zone so what has happened you have, although you have changed the design or the material of your particular component, but it has allowed you to increase your production rate. And believe me, even a small increment in the production rate in today's market can uh, generate millions. So this analysis is very important uh, economically and as well as for the, uh, for the company. So, you know, uh, this is the on-site optimization, which you can do. Uh, obviously, it involves some OPEX, that is the operational expenditure uh, to change the material type or the design or the, you know, angle of a uh, bend or in this case, uh, we're talking about a bend. So you do the NPV analysis and you come up to a point that, yes, the cost which I'm incurring now is very less. If it is very less as compared to the gain which I'm getting, I should go ahead with that design. So this is something uh, uh, which uh, the software will help you in doing uh, the economic analysis. Obviously, this is just for one bend or for one risk. You can define with the help of the software. You can define this risk or this uh, uh, the one risk or all the risks for all the components uh, at a single uh, level. So this is the concept of operating envelope. All right. 
so again uh, if what if i talk about uh, talk about numbers so here is to give you an idea that uh, uh, you know there were various discussions on uh, how uh, effective or cost effective you are saying and what all is the uh, i mean how much will the gain uh, why is uh, uh, why are you stressing so much on sand management and surface so this is i think uh, this slide should give you the answer so uh, if we have a typical ipr versus blp curve here and this is actually uh, a real field uh, scenario with uh, in which i think one of the fields where uh, joe and babu sir have worked so in initially they were flowing they had around 25 wells and they were flowing at 200 barrels per day uh, for each well so what we are saying is that without the sand master software or without the sand management analysis uh, currently the total flow rate is around 5000 barrels per day 25 into 200 simple so total revenue generated per annum with 65 dollars of barrels per day uh, sorry 65 dollars per barrel of uh, uh, crude uh, rate is around 120 million usds assuming uh, i'm assuming that we are uh, not in incurring any losses due to production deferment but if you use sandmaster and with that analysis which i have shown you just uh, uh, a slide back if you increase your increment uh, increase your production from 200 to 250 barrels per day just 50 barrels per day your total flow rate increased to 6.25 thousand barrels per day total revenue jumped from one around 120 millions to 150 millions barrels per day uh, sorry uh, usds the investment, the investment will be effective monitoring of acoustic sand sensors around a million, UT thickness devices upon around 0.5 million, desanders if needed 4 million, sampling and lab analysis another 0.1 million. So overall, if I assume for five years you are uh, uh, you are uh, your operating expenditure, your expenditure will be around 1 million USD per annum for five years, and the yearly revenue increment for all the 25 wells will be 28 to 30 million USD. I hope uh, uh, I have answered some of the questions that were put in the chat box that why uh, are we stressing so much on the sand management at surface. And even, even if you think that uh, not all the 25 wells will contribute uh, from 200 to 250, I say just five wells uh, contribute uh, from 200 to 250 barrels per day. And still, I'll be uh, making 5 million USDs per year as an uh, as in my incremental uh, you know gain for my company so just imagine just compare these values 4 million 1 million you are using for your investment and you're getting 5 million USDs in return so this is where we say that do the analysis before you commit to a particular sand control type it's not always that uh, a downhole sand control will be effective for your uh, uh, for sand management. It can be a surface sand management as well. All right. So operating envelopes again. Uh, this is uh, again a screenshot from uh, from the uh, software itself. We have sand concentration and liquid rate here, and uh, these are the various uh, the more bed like uh, uh, figures that you see are uh, the erosion risk limits for various components. The straight lines are the deposition risk limits for uh, again for uh, two components here, and the uh, more red curves that you see here are the sand handling graphs, uh, which will help you in you know uh, assessing that what type uh, I mean how much sand uh, your particular component can handle. This is very effective in terms of getting sand handling with respect to your uh, sand getting accumulated in tubing or in your wells. Uh, sand getting accumulated in your desanders, sand getting accumulated in your uh, separators or you know any of your uh, uh, component. So again, to generate all the risk related to sand management from erosion, corrosion, metal loss, deposition, handling, clean out, etc., all can be done on a single platform for all the risks for all the components. Risks that are entered by user again are erosion, deposition, handling, corrosion. Quality being clean, clean out frequency of removal can be uh, can be managed and can be done. All right, uh, a quick demo to the software. I think uh, we have exceeded our time limit a little. All right, so uh, if you guys see here, this is uh, the uh, this is how the software looks like. 
So I just quickly show you that this is the source that I was talking about. If I double click on the source, I'll get the fluid properties that I need to enter to define the source. Uh, the sand details. I have is, to take, uh, uh, maybe by the want of time, uh, yeah. what we can do is uh, we can quickly show uh, uh, the properties and everything to, rather than going into details of the software. Because if okay, somebody is interested, we can have another session for the software later on. Fine, sure. So just go to the outputs and uh, some system analysis. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, this is a typical PSD data that you need to enter. With respect to time. Right, sir. Okay. So uh, various type of outputs or the parameters that can be generated from the software. We have mixture velocity. We have elevation profiles. You have pressure, temperature. Uh, GOR trends that can be plotted. Just for example, you have pressure trend for your entire facility here. Uh, sorry. Yep. Metal loss, as, a, uh, as I was telling you, that uh, we don't not only evaluate erosion, but we also evaluate corrosion uh, and total metal loss. So, I mean, uh, this is a unique feature of the software. The position, uh, we talked about. Uh, critical velocity flow and the graphs that I actually showed you will can be generated by this uh, feature. PVT outputs, you can see the oil formation volume factor for your entire facility. Hold up outputs will give you the sand mass rate that is flowing through your facility, solid sands output. Again, sand concentration, velocity, and deposition rate for your sand at each and every component of your facility can be generated by this, uh, this output. Quickly again, sand, how a uh, sand management chart looks like. Uh, this are already generated for you guys. So this is something which it looks like. Again, you have a certain markers here. You can plot your current operating point and the operating point you want to go to. So this is the concept of sand management charts. Uh, PSD profile, quickly I would touch upon this. This is the PSD that you have entered into your software that is at the source. And this is actually which is coming out. So you can see there is, uh, I mean, because there's a, change in the PSD, it simply means that you are depositing your particles at some point in your facility. And with the analysis, obviously with the data feature uh, available, you can see at which component it is happening. Uh, you have choke features. I mean, it's it's like defining your entire, making your entire facility from your well board to your storage tanks. You can do it with this software. Uh, Joe, anything else uh, you would like me to show or should I uh, move to the presentation now? I think uh, I think that uh, should be good. I mean, uh, uh, the only thing which I want to highlight here is to everyone is uh, uh, you won't see such a software anywhere in the world. This is the first time such a software has been developed. I have in my career not seen anything like that which is uh, calculating erosion or PSD profiles the way it is. So for students uh, who are very fresh and green and they they are preparing themselves to move into the industry very soon, this will be a good opportunity if you can have a hands-on on the software at this stage, because definitely sand is an issue which you will encounter anytime within your, uh, within your career life. Uh, maybe uh, Abhishek, uh, we can quickly go on uh, very quick on case studies and uh, then we can yeah. just wrap it up. Okay, so uh, uh, the case studies we have, as I told you that if you have a uh, certain component which is prone to erosion, for example, a choke, you can do the choke uh, analysis there. What we do is we quickly calculate on, uh, I'm not, uh, I think uh, you guys uh, might not be as much aware about the CV values of the choke. So what we do is we plot this and there are CV values for the choke, uh, which are manufacturer given. And then there are CV values that we calculate depending on the rate at which the well is flowing. So we compare those and if the trend is, you know, parallel to each other, the choke is performing very well. Any change in the trend, uh, which in that indicates the choke is damaged or is malfunctioning. So if you get that trend, uh, which is, you know, uh, change in the trend, you automatically know that you, it's time to change your choke. So this is actually a real field case. Uh, the second field case, uh, this is from the Malaysian offshore. This is from the Indian, uh, uh, Indian onshore, I guess. So, uh, here the uh, data was very limited from the, uh, from the operator. 
and uh, on, uh, it was a gas lift well and the problem was that they were having quite a lot of uh, uh, sand collection downhole uh, and they uh, and the, uh, uh, you know they had to clean out uh, conduct a clean out at you know, very rapid uh, pace maybe every 3 to 4 months they had to call a coil tubing unit and conduct a tubing clean out so uh, what we told them was that uh, uh, boss, uh, like uh, in one of the questions that you are currently your uh, so, um, velocity at the source is quite less what you need to do is what you need to do is you need to be um, gave them a limit of the velocity which they need to reach in order to transport each and every particle to the surface so we told them that uh, if you reach at uh, 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 at your liquid rate around 1380 valves per day every particle greater than 250 microns will flow to the surface that means you, are, you will have very less deposition downhole so what we did was we decreased their quality being clean out frequency from let's say three to four times a year to only once a year and this is a direct cost impact of hundred and thirty thousand dollars so it's not only uh, the software is not only giving you the uh, idea of uh, handling sand as surface but also uh, helps you at various places to you know optimize your production optimize your revenue and you know get more out of it uh, this is again malaysian offshore uh, this is where they were flowing uh, i think they were uh, yeah inside diameter vision uh, so they were flowing from a 958 and 278 inch analyst so 958 is your casing id uh, sorry casing uh, designation uh, casing size and 278 was the tubing size so due to some reason they had to flow via analyst and then to the tubing so initially uh, we have a concept of uh, if we are flowing through the analyst we have a concept of hydraulic diameter so hydraulic diameter is not exactly you know uh, 958 uh, id minus 278 od it is uh, i mean we can obviously take another session on that <laughs> but uh, Okay, so if the hydraulic diameter, which when calculated came to 5.8 inches, this red line, if you see in the PSD curve is the surface, uh, sorry, is the source. And this was actually getting transported, but with time, uh, because very less, yeah, very less particles were getting transported. So uh, uh, with time, uh, as the sand deposition was taking place in the analyst, the effective hydraulic diameter was decreasing and there was a case where the effective hydraulic diameter came to only 4.2 inches and all the sand particle sizes got uh, i mean were being able to uh, get transported to the surface so this is also a type of analysis this is a time based analysis obviously you can also there are also features available in the software where you can take out the time interval which uh, it will take to deposit a certain particle size or the entire part, uh, psd in your analysts or in a well bow uh, so this is the another type of case study data analytics quickly what do you mean by data analytics and how do we use it we can, we can use skip it? this we can skip this uh, uh, we can share the, the slides uh, okay fine 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 so uh, just a uh, just one liner to find the optimum sand control in a sand producing ground field with multiple reservoirs that's where data analytics and data mining come into picture uh, where do we use failure analysis, sand volume allocation, interpretation of sensors? Test. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I guess uh, it's uh, way beyond uh, the time limit that was given. Uh, so, yep, that's it. Uh, any questions uh, regarding this? Are we doing a quiz also, or no, no? Okay. Uh, that was that was a part of the quiz which we already did. So. I didn't see any questions on the chat box also. I guess it's been a long session. <laughs> I think it's all cleared up to the attendees. Attendees, anybody who has any questions, they can unmute yourself.
or can put their questions in the chat box. Yeah. Even we can share our uh, uh, email IDs with you. Uh, and then I think it's already there with Ajay Suri sir and uh, Nitesh sir, uh, our email IDs, and they can share. And uh, if you have any questions, any doubts regarding sand management, surface sand management, production engineering, you can please get back to us. Yeah, we are open to all questions at any time. Yeah. Sure, sir. Sure. I think it's over to you, Harshada and Dr. Raj. Yeah, I think uh, there are no more questions. And if we get any kind of questions, they will surely mail it to you. Uh, so just a minute. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm visible now. Yeah, you are, you are, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I think most of us can open our videos so you can see each other. <laughs> okay. I think, sir, literally, oh, sir, it was. We had uh, kept it closed, but uh, now we can open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sir, uh, honestly, it was very informative and insightful session. And like, um, I, I'm grateful, thankful to Greenfield Oil and Trading Services for briefing us the backdrop of surface and management and the knowledge that has been provided on the topics of technicalities and the softwares that was undoubtedly will come usage in to the, all the attendees at some point of time. I'm sure about that. And uh, this was very informative session and especially the quizzes, sir, it grabbed all most of the attentions and like uh, those adrenal hormones secreted a lot at that point of time and it created uh, and it even cleared a lot of concepts at that point of time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sir, and Greenfield Oil and Trading Service team. And taking this opportunity, I would like to thank our professor, Ajay Suri, sir, without whose gracious effort, uh, and he's a coordinator of this workshop, and without his effort, this session would have been not possible. So thank you, sir, for your efforts. And uh, I would like to express my gratitude also to the delegates here on behalf of SP IITISM student chapter and ARMA IITISM Dhanbad student chapter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Because, because thank you, sir, on the, on the behalf of the Department of Petroleum Engineering, sir. Uh, we are very lucky to hear you again in the span of six months. It's interesting and it's so nice to get back to the alma mater and speak to them. Yeah. It's really, really a thrilling experience to talk to you, young guys. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, sir, for your insightful session. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. And thanks for attending. Okay. Hope it was interesting and we made your day interesting. Yes, sir. It's, it's a definitely, yes, especially I think, so the way that uh, the workshop was arranged, so it was very informative and it was easy to understand, which was important for the, from the session point of view. So. Yeah. It thanks. started from the basics and everything. I think the student would have uh, uh, liked it in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we intended to, because it was a student session, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we also uh, hope that you found the software interesting. And as Joe was saying, so we can give you a student version for hands-on experience. So as we go ahead, we can discuss with the, you, Dr. Suri and uh, Dr. Kiran and come up with a... Yes, sir. We will... Uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Joe, you want to say anything to close? No, uh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I'm done. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. And, uh, Thank you all. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, well, folks, that's all for today. Hope to see you soon with our next exciting session. Do follow us on our social media handles and get updates of our latest events. Until then, stay home, stay safe, and mainly stay happy. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks.